How goes it all? Welcome back to Patterson L Properties. Hope you guys have a great and exceptional day. Before I go further, Patterson L Properties wholesales, real estate, and all that good stuff from distressed properties. We help distressed property homeowners. So definitely contact us. Websites in the description. And let's go from there. All right. Now, I usually only talk about residential real estate, but today I want to talk about another aspect of real estate when it comes to land and you know facilities and things, warehousing facilities and things of that nature. And what one can do with it, family. I came across this article today that started that stated popular uh, a popular parking lot in near Philadelphia International Airport has been snapped up for forty five million dollars by Pro Logis, a real estate giant that specializes in leasing space to retail, e commerce, and logistics businesses, according to the firm that brokered the deal. And lots of real estate investors never really think about the great aspects of owning lots of land or parking lots and the wonderful aspects of owning a parking lot. Um, the article also stated that, uh, or even a public storage facility, you know, think about it like that. There's still a lot of mom and pop public storage facility operations out there. The article also stated that what caught the San Francisco based company's eye is nearly 19 acre property long used by the Philadelphia travelers who stowed their cars at the pre-flight lot. All, you know, all airport major, all airports have parking that, you know, people will park the cars at. I, usually, I don't know why, because usually the parking fees are astronomical, but some people have it like that or they just don't care about the price. Owned by a subsidy, um, subsidiary of Interpark, a Chicago-based company that operates nearly a dozen parking facilities in, cent in Center City, Philadelphia, the pre-flight lot uh, closed to the public last month. The deal is yet another sign of intensifying interest in the Philadelphia region for companies that focus on getting goods to customers, a trend optimized by Amazon's growing footprint of warehouse and distribution centers in and around Philadelphia. Now, before I go forward, family, if one is familiar with the real estate prices in the Washington, D.C. metro area, they are astronomical. And in the five to six years, um, in five to six years, the city of Philadelphia will resemble, whether people want to believe it or not, in regards to real estate, it will resemble the real estate prices of Washington, D.C. And give it about 10 years. And in the city of Baltimore will resemble um, most likely to Philadelphia and probably another 15 years it will resemble Washington, D.C. But do you want to believe it or not, Baltimore is in a perfect location right off the Atlantic, right off 90, Highway 95, connects to Philadelphia, connects to Washington, D.C. Need I say more? But I'll leave it alone on that one. All right. Now, because, you know, that's why I always say don't always pay attention to what the media tells you, because if you do, a lot of times you will miss the economic boat, especially when it comes to real estate family. I'm a big, big fan of doing your own research and putting your own boots on the ground, family. But that is just my perspective and, you know, go from there. The article also stated that the pandemic really accelerated this trend of last mile um, logistics focus industrial real estate, which was stated by Ryan Guterri, which uh, with the commercial real estate firm in Newmark, which represented the interpark in the sale. Everyone is focused on shortening the time of getting products to customers. Hey, I love Amazon, Amazon same day shipping. I love being able to order from DoorDash to get my um, products from the grocery store. Rarely have to leave the house. It's a beautiful thing. Prologis acquired Philadelphia developer Liberty Property Trust and with, more, with it more than 500 industrial sites in a $13 billion transaction that closed last year in 2020. The company's main customers are Amazon, Home Depot, FedEx, UPS, and DHL. And with that being said, those are not bad customers to have, and it, sh it shows that business is good. Obviously, with your Home Depots, with your FedExes, with your UPSs and DHO and Amazon, having um, industrialized uh, warehousing facilities near or right at the airport helps the, um, you know, the commerce and, and transportation of your products just accelerate. You know what I mean, family? So it's, a, it's an interesting thing. It's a beautiful thing. And that's when a lot of, you know, box um, box truck drivers fall into place, CDL drivers fall into place. You know, it's just economic moves being made on all levels, family. All right. The two the 271,000 square foot facility sits on a parcel at 4700 Island Avenue, and they plan to fully renovate the existing building and turn it into a Class A logistics facility, which will serve customers looking for a highly functional distribution space near the major consumption hub. Philadelphia International Airport and I-95 
Um, so that is being, with that being said, a logistics facility located near a major highway like I-95 and an international airport, it definitely equals a win-win situation, family. Last June in 2020, um, I'm sorry, last June of this year, the Philadelphia International Airport announced a major initiative to expand cargo facilities at the airport over the next five to 10 years. Here, let me read that again. Since June of 2021, the Philadelphia International Airport announced a major initiative to expand cargo facilities at the airport over the next five to 10 years. So for those that are living in Philadelphia and that have been living there for generations and want to give up their real estate, you're giving up your real estate at a very bad time. And I know a lot of people are like, well, I just want to move down south and move to a cheaper state or move to the Midwest or move to a foreign country. Keep your real estate, rent it out. The city is exploding, whether you want to believe it or not. And this will be Baltimore in the next 10 years, whether you believe it or not. Think about the economics. Don't think about the history. Don't think about the city government. Think about the economics of it all. Think about the location of the city and you go from there. That's just my personal opinion. I had to put it out there. All right. Anyways, uh, where was I at? So anyway, news of those plans tied in really well with the organization's sales process. The winning purchase price came in at a 2.6 times the property's tax assessed value of $1,700,000, basically, according to the city records. The uh, $45 million amount breaks down to uh, about $166 per square foot of the existing building. Also with the online uh, e-commerce culture increasing, Customers want their products within hours and not days. The need for industrial facilities with continue, will continue to increase, especially around major airports and major cities and other transportation areas. So with that being said, owning lots, facilities, et cetera, can for the most part work out for those with the right mindset, the right vision, and do their due diligence. You know what I mean? So do great three free things, family. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. And as I always say, make money move so you're going to live broke like a fool. Take care.